फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट the appellants argued that the injuries on pw1 and the deceased persons do not match the position they were in when the firing occurred we will answer this with reference to the first as well as the second incident at the first incident from the testimony of pw1 as well as the site plan drawn by pw12 pw1 was initially standing in front of the jonga when he stopped to speak to the deceased rakesh shukla while explaining that the site plan does not accurately describe lallans and his position he categorically states that he moved to the right side known driver side of the jonga when it was facing east to speak to the deceased rakesh as there were people on the driver's side we will quote this in his own words as this is of some importance the jonga had been stopped parked in the mid of the road i was in front of the jonga only when it was stopped there i do not recall exactly if i was on the right side of the road at that time the jonga was facing east the east falls in the direction of my home I moved to the jonga at known driver side to speak to him I had gone to my right side there were a few people standing in the side of driver my servant domestic help lallan had come to me I had told the io the fact that the jonga was standing exactly in the mid of the road but note that we were standing on the right side of the road I do not know the reason why the lo had shown demarcated our location in the right side of the road but not in front of the jonga after the first incident the jonga was turned to proceed towards the hospital on reaching the second spot near parma pandit's house when the assailants again attacked rajesh got down from the jonga with his rifle in an attempt to retaliate at that point he suffered multiple bullet injuries consistent with its stand pw1 was behind the jonga on the right side which is the driver's side and that is how he could take cover of the jonga but he could not escape a bullet injury on his leg so far as deceased rajesh shukla is concerned he proactively got out of the jonga and took a position to fire at the assailants there is a clear distinction between the position taken by rajesh on the one hand and pw1 on the other there is therefore sufficient explanation for pw1 receiving not as many bullet injuries as the deceased rajesh we may also add that the submission made by the appellants is not based on any evidence but proceeds on a theory of probability the high court has correctly rejected this theorization which has unfortunately impressed the trial court this is without any basis it was therefore compelling for the high court to interfere and correct the glaring mistake of the trial court in a situation like this when there is a group attack which lasted for only a few minutes it is unreasonable to expect an eye witness to recount each fact in mathematical detail a recent decision of this court recounted a chaotic situation like this by reviewing the existing case laws on the subject in abdul sayed versus state of maharashtra this court held as under in the instant case a very large number of assailants attacked chand khan and shabir the deceased caused injuries with deadly weapons to them the incident stood concluded within few minutes thus it is natural that the exact version of the incident revealing every minute detail that is meticulous 
exactitude of individual acts cannot be given by the eye witnesses the question of the weight to be attached to the evidence of a witness that was himself injured in the course of the occurrence has been extensively discussed by this court where a witness to the occurrence has himself been injured in the incident the testimony of such a witness is generally considered to be very reliable as he is a witness that comes with a bullet in guarantee of his presence at the scene of the crime and is unlikely to spare his actual assailants in order to falsely implicate someone convincing evidence is required to discredit an injured witness reiterating the same principle about the evidence of an injured witness this court in rajendra versus state of karnataka held as under this court has considered the minor contradictions in the testimony while appreciating the evidence in criminal trial it is held in the said judgment that only contradictions in material particulars and not minor contradictions can be a ground to discredit the testimony of the witnesses stop